For macroeconomics, we need to cover all the policies. If you look at the eight mark question, we have uh, evaluation in the eight mark question as well. This discipline of spending 40 minutes for each component would mean you will still have some time left for revising or reading your answers. And that is also very important. Hi everyone, my name is Ali and I teach economics at Alt Academy. You must be wondering that, you know, exams are near and hardly three months left and uh, what's the best way to prepare for your exam and how to get that A or A star. Don't worry about it. We have everything sorted for you. All you need to do is just follow our instructions and you will get your result. So how do we get an A star? Well, in this video, I'll give you all the key things that you need to know to ace your exam. So the first thing to remember is that the A-level economics course has changed. From previous years, now we have a different format. We have two sections, one for micro, one for macro, which would mean in paper two, you need to make sure you are prepared for micro and prepared for macro separately. In previous times, what we used to do, we would just focus on macro or just focus on micro and we were good to go. But now, if you want to get your A, you need to make sure you are preparing for micro, preparing for macro separately. So for microeconomics, we're looking at some key economic concepts. So one thing that I would want all of my students to prepare really well is price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply. This is an important topic because in A2, you don't get tested on elasticity. So this is a time when examiner is focusing on elasticity. And every year we see at least one question on either elasticity of demand, which includes income elasticity and gross elasticity, and sometimes even price elasticity of supply. So prepare for elasticity really well. Second important micro topic that one should prepare for is the government intervention. And the government intervention is a long one because you are looking at uh, indirect taxes, subsidies, minimum maximum price, and so on. But don't worry, we have all the content very well sorted for you. All you need to do is follow that uh, plan of ours and you will be fine. Now let's talk about macro. For macro, I think it's really important for us to understand that macro has very interconnected topics. So for example, inflation is connected with international trade, international trade is connected with exchange rate, exchange rate is connected with policies. So you cannot leave any single topic in macro because everything is interconnected. There will be a lot of focus on inflation and international trade because these are the topics that do not get tested in A2. So the examiner loves to test them in AS economics. Another important thing to consider is that uh, for macroeconomics, we need to cover all the policies. Those policies include fiscal policies, monetary policy and supply side policies. Now, when we are covering policies, we are also looking at the problems and how can we use these policies to solve the problems. So make sure when you are covering, for example, international trade or inflation, you need to know the connection between those and the policies. Knowing how to attempt past papers is really important and if you look at now the the format, the format has completely changed. If you look at the eight mark question, we have uh, evaluation in the eight mark question as well. So previously, if you look at, for example, 2019 question uh, for um, um, micro or macro, uh, you will realize that they never had evaluation in the eight mark questions. But now you have evaluation even in the eight mark questions, which means once you write your content, you are also supposed to give two points for evaluation. So if you look at the marks breakdown, you have uh, six marks for content, which will have analysis or explanation, but you also have two marks given for uh, your evaluation. And the key word to remember is the, the words like, uh, you know, they may say whether uh, this is right, or they may say assess, uh, and all of these keywords are to be remembered because these are the ones which means that we need to evaluate our explanation that we've given in the answer. For the 12 mark question, again, we have assessment and evaluation. So if you look at the marks breakdown, we have 12 marks for uh, the question, which of which eight marks are for your explanation and four marks are for evaluation. Now, the key thing to remember here is that if they have four marks, then this means they are looking for four different points. Similarly, if they have two marks for evaluation, they're looking for two different points. So the only difference I would say between the eight mark question and the 12 mark question now is that in the eight mark question, 
you have two marks per evaluation. In the 12 mark question, you have eight marks per evaluation, four marks per evaluation. So that's the difference. A lot of time people also get worried, you know, like uh, when is the right time to practice for data response? And my answer to them is once you're done with all your content, that is when you are good to practice for data response. Data response is more holistic. It tests your knowledge for the whole uh, course. So it's always better to uh, practice data responses right at the end. And if you look at data response, even data response has evaluation. The last two questions of a data response, which is roughly for six marks and four marks, they are all evaluation. So don't miss out on giving pros and cons or limitations or all the things that you know about evaluation in those parts as well. Another important thing is when to practice MCQs. And my tip here will be as soon as you get done with any topic, go and attack the MCQs. Solve those MCQs because those MCQs will help you ace your topic. Your understanding will become better when you practice MCQs before essay questions. Now, now see this, if we have a question here, this is uh, from a very recent paper and uh, I have both uh, 2A and 2B, which is, this is the micro section. And I want you to focus on what is happening in this question. So let's read the question. It says, with the help of a diagram, uh, ex explain what is meant by consumer surplus and producer surplus and consider whether a rise in the price of a product because of higher cost of production is likely to always reduce the consumer surplus. Now, look at this part. This consider whether a rise in the price of a product because of higher cost. This is again, as I mentioned, this is your evaluation. This is where you need to, you know, talk about what are the conditions which are necessary, for example, in this case, for consumer surplus to go down because of a higher cost, right? Now, in the first part of the question, uh, with the help of diagrams, we're talking about what is consumer surplus, what is producer surplus. Then we talk about the conditions which will result in consumer and producer surplus. But then is this part where you will be given two marks. And this is where your A will be determined because a lot of kids will be focusing on, you know, consumer surplus, producer surplus and its explanation. But only few will be talking about the conditions necessary, the limitations and so on that can change consumer surplus. Now, look at B again. They say, assess whether a policy of fixing maximum price for an essential food is likely to be more effective than a policy of making transfer payment to low income households. Now, here again, you can see this is a question about maximum price. So we'll talk about what is maximum price, what are the conditions necessary for maximum price and so on. But then we will also focus on some of the key points for evaluation. And for us, the evaluation will be, for example, if this question is, is given, we'll talk about, you know, what is the conditions necessary to make sure the policy is effective? So you may talk about, you know, if you are putting a maximum price, there will always be a shortage. And so one may need to make sure we get rid of the shortage. So all of these are essential points that come in evaluation. So the 2A would have two marks for evaluation and 2B will have four marks for evaluation. But doing well in evaluation will make sure our B will get converted into an A. So what are the common mistakes a lot of students make? Well, I want to break it down into two aspects. The first aspect is about, you know, preparing for exam. And the second is about, you know, uh, giving the paper and or doing the exam. So the first part, which is about, you know, where do we go wrong when, it, when we're preparing for our AS level economics? And my uh, sort of experience of many years tell me that a lot of time we end up preparing for few topics really well and we ignore other topics. And this is why now if you look at the new format, we have very little choice available. So if I want to give one advice to anyone who wants to sort of uh, ace the exam uh, and they want to know what's the best way to prepare, you need to have working knowledge of all the topics. Of course, there will be some topics that you would be wanting to or you like or you find them easy. There will be some topics that you feel that come commonly like inflation and uh, elasticity of demand, as we mentioned, are very important topics to prepare. But you need to also have a working knowledge of all the topics. For example, you can't ignore you know, uh, PPC because it's too easy or you can't ignore, for example, policies because it's too difficult. So if you are uh, wanting to ace, first of all, you need to make sure you have good knowledge of all the topics. The second part is on the exam day, how do we ace our exam? And uh, a lot of time people, what they do is that they end up spending too much time on data response. 
Now that is also wrong. If you look at how the marks are divided, you have 20 marks for data response, 20 marks for the first essay from, of, of micro, and 20 marks for your macro essay. And so if you ask me how to divide your time, I would say divide it equally because that is the marks are telling us how much time to devote. And the rule of thumb is that one marks, two minutes. So for example, if you have 20 marks, you'll maximum the time that you're spending on it will be 40 minutes. So I'll spend 40 minutes on my data response, 40 minutes on my essay one and 40 minute, minute on my essay two. This discipline of spending 40 minutes for each component would mean you will still have some time left for revising or reading your answers. And that is also very important for us to make sure we do well. So now let's talk about how do we prepare for the exam. Uh, given exams are around the corner, we need to know how do we prepare for it effectively. My two cents will be that one needs to make sure that once they do a topic, they right away practice MCQs and do their past paper questions and practice questions so that they know that they have mastered the topic and then they move on. You need to also make sure that if you have, for example, micro has five topics, macro has five topics, you need to make sure that your time is divided in an equal manner. You cannot leave major topics for the end because that will also be something that will result in you to end up having too much pressure in the end. And the last and most important tip that I can give you is something that goes for everything in life. You need to be disciplined. You need to be consistent. You need to have uh, your day divided in such a manner that you're not ignoring, you know, any one single A-level subject of yours. So if you're taking time out for economics, do take time out for math or accounting or whatever you're doing. But be consistent and be disciplined and you will meet all your goals. I hope this was helpful. Uh, all the best for the exams. We are here to help you. Just reach out.